Hi, I'm Anastasia, and I was born to the most loving parents ever. Mom was a lawyer, and we'd always play games where she pretended I was her lawyer and she was my client. I find you guilty of drinking my cereal. I sentence you to 100 years in prison. Oh, please have pity on me, judge. But then she suddenly left me and dad when I was five and we never heard from her again. I had to grow up with a dad who was obsessed with computers and electronics. Dad could fix just about anything. Where does this go? Right here, daddy. He taught me everything I knew about electronics. In no time, I started to mess with them like they were nothing. In fact, I wanted to be an engineer, just like him. But then one day, while we were busy with a robot project, we suddenly heard a loud machine noise coming from outside. When we ran out to check what it was, we were surprised to find two bulldozers staring at us. Sir, this property belongs to Kent Inc. We are under instructions to demolish it. What? Tell Mr. Kent that he can kick rocks. Sir, please move out of the way. You have five seconds and we won't ask again. But Dad and I were not about to let these crazy people just tear down our building. So we linked arms together and stood in front of the store courageously. The drivers ignored us and drove their bulldozers towards us without any care for our safety in the world. Dad and I had to jump out of the way. After we lost our store, Dad fell ill and went into a long coma. I stayed by his bedside every day, holding his hand and hoping for the best. Everything is going to be okay, Dad. I promise to get payback on Harry Kent for doing this to you. I didn't know how I was going to do it, but it was going to happen. I swore it. After Dad's coma, I had to move in with my mom's wealthy cousin, Aunt Jenna. Dad had no relatives, so she was my only option. What are those? Aunt Jenna was an upper-class woman who was always cold towards me. She hated my passion for electronics and treated my projects like trash. Oh, those are my robot models, Aunt. Dad and I used to- Security! Please dispose of that trash! My models were like my life! I couldn't let that happen! Please don't throw them away, Aunt Jenna! I'll keep them out of your way! I promise! I looked at her face, praying she'd agree. Fine, you can keep your trash, but make sure I never see them. I sighed, relieved. Aunt gave me the worst room in the house, the basement, while she and her daughter, Geraldine, lived like royalty in the biggest rooms. Geraldine was the spitting image of her mother, mean, spoiled, and evil. Once, while she was sunbathing by the pool, I was passing by with a glass of juice and tripped over her foot, which was in the way. She went berserk. You clumsy oaf! You ruined my bikini! I'm so sorry, but your shoes were in the way. That's no excuse, you fool! I'm actually a very smart fool, if you want to know. And then later that day, while I was fixing some robot parts in my room, the she-devil walked in and dumped a bucket of water on my robot! Oops! I thought that was trash! Just like everything else in this basement! I saw Red and immediately pounced on her. Aunt Jenna heard us fighting and showed up. She pushed me away from her daughter. How dare you come into my house and attack my child! I tried to explain, but she wouldn't even listen. It's those useless robots, isn't it? I'll seize them all! No, please! They're the only things I have left of my dad! You should have thought of that before you attacked my daughter! Ah! Uh, I felt like my whole world had fallen apart after what Aunt Jenna did! I wish Dad could wake up and rescue me from this house of wickedness! After nearly a month of staying with her, Aunt enrolled me in the same private high school as Geraldine. And I settled in nicely. With time, I became the top student in my class. Anastasia, an A-plus again. You should teach your cousin and maybe her D could turn into a B. Geraldine burned with jealousy, but that didn't bother me. She might be the queen in her house, but when it came to the books, I ruled supreme. A few weeks before summer break, my school planned a basketball game. The physics club, which I was in charge of, were helping out with the electrical system in the gym as the cheerleaders practiced their routine. I looked at Geraldine as she practiced. She looked so perfect. If only she wasn't mean all the time. What are you staring at, weirdo? Your makeup makes you look like Ursula. Her royal meanness stormed up to my ladder and shook it, knocking me to the ground. How dare you, you monster! Before she could charge at me, a nerdy kid wobbled into the gym and tripped over some wires, making the lights go off. I could hear him rummaging around the wires for 20 minutes, yet the lights weren't coming on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I'm new here. 
I found my way in the darkness towards him. Hey, let me help. You might shock yourself if you keep messing around with the wires. With my understanding of electronics, I connected a few wires in the dark, and the lights returned. When the lights came on, I saw the boy's face clearly. And, oh boy, he was handsome. Wow, how did you do that? It's just a fuse. You displaced it when you were going over the wires. That's impressive. My father owns a robotics company. I could recommend you for an internship whenever there's an opening. Wait a minute, his father? Who's your father? I asked out of curiosity. Uh, Harry Kent, by the look on your face, I'm guessing you already know him. Oh, I did more than know him, but Terrence didn't need to know to what extent. Yeah, sure, he's the super popular billionaire, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm Terrence, by the way. What's your name? I'm, um, Anastasia. I hope we see more of each other, Anastasia. Hopefully, I'm not tripping over more <laughs> wires by then. When Terrence left, Geraldine suddenly appeared in front of me. Throwing yourself at the billionaire's son is a new low for you, Anastasia. She sounded jealous. It must be hard knowing he talked to me and not you. She fumed, but I ignored her and returned to my work. The next morning, I found Terrence in the library, and a plan suddenly struck in my head. What if I got close to him and used him to exact my revenge on his father? I put my plan in place and did the classic girl trips close to boy move. He caught me. <laughs> Are you all right? Sorry, I didn't see you. Up close, his eyes looked kind, but I didn't let that trick me. Hey, you're the girl from earlier. Please, let me treat you to lunch to show my gratitude. And just like that, he had taken my bait. Sure thing, you owe me one anyways. After school, I met Terrence at a nearby pizza shop, which wasn't where I expected a billionaire's son to eat. I assumed he'd go somewhere flashier with gold as a meal option or whatever billionaires ate. This is now my favorite pizza place. Really? I didn't believe him. He was putting on the charismatic attitude to fool me. Ha! Huh, too bad I was too smart to fall for it. Suddenly, he lifted his hand towards my face. W what are you doing? Relax. You have a pizza stain on your cheek. <laughs> oh, thanks. You're so sweet. As Terrence cleaned the stain on my cheek, I felt a warm, fuzzy sensation in my tummy. His hand lingered on my cheek before he removed it with a sweet smile. Focus, Anastasia! Thank you, I appreciate the lunch. It's cool. So where did you learn your impressive wiring skill from? My father, Clinton Hale. As I said his name, I looked at Terence's face for a reaction and was disappointed to find none. After our lunch, I found out he rode a motorcycle. What kind of a billionaire son rode a motorcycle? I began to spend a lot of time with Terence. My guard was still up around him. No matter what, I never wanted to forget that he was the son of ultra-billionaire Harry Kent. Terence was very nice, and his sweet gestures made it difficult for me to stick to my plan. On my 16th birthday, when I thought no one remembered, he got me a pretty necklace. Here, let me help you. As he placed the necklace around my neck, his fingers touched me, and I felt goosebumps. After he finished, he stared at my neck for the longest time. You have the prettiest neck. Thank you. One day, Geraldine discovered Terence hugging me, and envious of our friendship, she ratted me out to her mom. Aunt Jenna was furious. Of course you'd be like your mom, going after guys with money, I see. That was the first time Aunt mentioned my mother. I tried to ask a few more questions about mom out of curiosity, but she shot them down and focused on scolding me instead. Your dad would be so ashamed of you if he was awake, hanging out with the son of the man who ruined his life. You can do better. I want you to stop seeing him. Aunt had a point, but I was very focused on seeing my plan through, even if it meant sneaking around her to see Terrence. My dad deserved justice, and I wanted to bring it to him, no matter the risk. I told Terence that my aunt wasn't fond of our friendship, and we agreed to begin meeting in secret. On one of the days I was supposed to meet him at our spot in the pizza shop, I found him getting yelled at by his father in a corner instead. I immediately hid behind an opposite wall and peeked out. I've warned you to stop coming to this trashy shop. You have a company to manage, boy. Act like it. Stop making me ashamed of you all the time. Terence suddenly turned around and noticed me. His eyes looked sad. I quickly stopped peeking and returned to my hiding position. You will show up at tonight's fundraiser like a proper Kent. I don't want to see your silly bike anywhere around the building. Understood? Yes, Dad. 
As soon as Terence's dad left, he approached my hiding spot. I... um... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to eavesdrop. It's fine. So what happened back there? <sighs> my dad wants me to take over his company, but I don't want to. Why not? I don't like robotics. I want to be a doctor instead. My mom died of cancer when I was little. I want to help people like her. This wasn't the evil Terence I had conjured up in my head. I felt bad about using him, and was already thinking of an alternative to my plan when he said, I can't go to the fundraiser alone tonight. I need you by my side, Anastasia. Close to Harry Kent's mansion? That was a super tempting offer I could not refuse. I didn't want to keep using Terence, but I promised myself this would be the last time. That night, when everyone was asleep, I sneaked out of my window and ran up to the road where Terence was waiting for me beside a limousine. I wore a simple gown, and he wore a sophisticated suit and looked amazingly hot. You look so beautiful. He held the door open like a perfect gentleman, and I blushed as I climbed into the car. Thank you. We arrived at the fundraiser, and seeing all the fancy people in their fancy clothes made me feel inferior. Terence didn't care. You're the prettiest girl in this room. Terence was called up onto the stage a few minutes after we arrived, and he had to leave my side. I took advantage of the opportunity to snoop around the mansion for dirt on his father. During my search, I came across a door that seemed like Harry Kent's office and went in. I started searching the office for whatever I could find, and bingo! That's when I saw it. A folder tagged, confidential, right inside his drawers. I suddenly heard his footsteps approaching, but it was too late for me to hide, so I stuffed the folder inside my gown. Anastasia? Mom? It was my mom! But our reunion was cut short when we heard the sound of someone else's footsteps. Jump out of the window, quick! There's a ladder under it the plumber forgot this afternoon. I was so angry at her. After she left Dad and me, she never once cared to check on us. Why would I listen to you? You left me for years! I'll explain everything later. Please, just listen to me. Go out. No! I decided to listen to her and quickly made my way through the window and ran back to Aunt's house. As soon as I got home, I called Terrence to let him know that I left the party early. Then, I began to go through the contents of the confidential folder. What I found shocked me. My father used to own the company with Harry Kent before Harry accused him of fraud and kicked him out. Dad made me a major shareholder in Kent Inc. during his tenure there. This meant I was worth one billion dollars. But Harry wanted to take it all. I wondered what mom had to do with all this. Early the next morning, I was awakened by a phone call from an unknown number. Uh, hello? Anastasia, it's mom. Listen, I don't have much time. Come over to the abandoned trailer park as soon as you can. Mom sounded like she was in a haste, so I dressed up and hurried out to meet her. As soon as I got to the trailer park, Mom's car drove up to me, and I got in. To my surprise, she hugged me. Oh, I've missed you so much, baby. I was so shocked. I'm sorry for everything, but not reaching out to you guys was the only way to keep you safe. How? When your dad lost his job all those years ago, we hatched a plan. I was supposed to get closer to Harry Kent and save our family's legacy in the company. Keep your enemies closer, he always said. Is that why you couldn't spare some time to even check how I was doing? If I did, Harry would know where you were. You're a major shareholder in his company. He wants you out of the way. I had to lie and say I had dumped you somewhere in the Sahara Desert. Everything she told me added up, except for one thing, Ant. What about Ant and Geraldine? I pay your auntie thousands of dollars each month to look after you and keep your presence safe, which was working fine until Harry decided to relocate her. Wow, and that selfish woman had the guts to act like she did everything for me for free. I told mom how mean Aunt Geraldine had been to me, and she was angry. That Jezebel, I'll teach her a lesson for messing with my daughter. For now, honey, stay safe. I have a plan, and it's nearly ready. Mom and I kept in touch through secret phone calls. I told her everything about my relationship with Terrence, and she encouraged me to be honest with him. I'm in love with Terrence. If he knows I was using him, he would kill me. He's a nice kid. He wouldn't. And while I was on the phone call, Geraldine suddenly appeared and played a recording of my phone call to Mom. Hmm, I wonder what Terrence will do once he finds out you're using him. I tried to snatch the phone from her and accidentally pressed the send button, which sent the recording to Terrence. Uh-oh. Terrence listened to my recording and started to avoid me everywhere. He wouldn't even let me speak to him. I was devastated, but mom encouraged me to focus on the plan. 
On the day Harry Kent was to meet the board of directors to remove my shareholder status, I showed up to the meeting. No one has seen Hale's daughter for years. Who are you? Anastasia Hale. He looked like he was about to explode. Prove it. Mom suddenly entered the office. She doesn't have to. She's my daughter. And I have proof of everything you've done to her and my husband for years. As soon as his crimes came into light, Harry was dismissed from the company. And I retained my shareholder status. The next day, Mom took me out of Aunt Jenna's and I moved in with her. You and your child will no longer receive a penny from me. <laughs> the look on their faces made me so happy. Years later, I completed high school and college. I kept trying to reach out to Terrence, but it was futile. Mom and I paid regular visits to Dad. Hey, Dad, we miss you. So much has happened. Mom rescued me from the bad people, and I can now manage Kent Inc. Can you believe? All of your work is finally getting recognition. While I was talking to Dad, he suddenly moved his hand. Dad! Mom, call the doctor, quick! When Mom came back with the doctor, Dad was already opening his eyes. And when the doctor opened his mouth, it was then that I looked at him. Wow, this is... A miracle. It looks like he's out of the coma. Terrence, you are my dad's doctor? Anastasia? Oh, I'm glad to see you. Terrence, I've missed you so much. I'm so sorry for everything. It's fine. I've never stopped loving you, in spite of what's happened. That's why I transferred here, to help your dad. I was overwhelmed with emotions and suddenly kissed him. This was the best day ever. Hi, I'm Alessia from a small town in Kenya. Growing up, I was stubborn and also a happy kid, even though my mom worked as a servant for the wealthy chief Mwangi at his farm. I always felt like part of the family because of the chief's son, Barasa. He was my best friend and he did almost everything with me. He helped me with chores and even stopped me from cleaning his room whenever I had to. It was fun until his uppity father stopped him from hanging out with me. Barasa, you're better than playing around with the servants. I want you to stay away from them from now on. What Barasa's father said hurt me, and I knew it had something to do with the fact that Mum and I were poor. I became envious whenever I saw Barasa with his wealthy friends. So, one day, I devised a plan to change his opinion of me. All I needed were the same expensive items that his friends wore. I began to put a lot of pressure on Mum to get them for me. Mum! I want that dress. How about we go to the yard sale over there? They sure do have some nice clothes. I hate them. They're ugly and cheap. I knew our poor situation was none of mom's fault. And later that <gasps> evening, she surprised me. And I was so overjoyed. Honey, I saved some money and got you those Louis Vuitton shoes you wanted. Thank you so much, mom. I have no idea why you need all these things anyway. We can do without them. I didn't tell her that I needed them because of Barasa. He had a swimming party that night and I wanted to make the best impression possible. I was going to show everyone that I wasn't just a regular servant girl. When I walked into the party dressed in one of my mom's old fashionable gowns and the Louis Vuitton shoes, everyone turned to stare at me. They made me so nervous that my heels shook so badly and I fell into the pool. Barasa quickly jumped in to save me, and I couldn't help but admire his strength. He lifted me as if I weighed nothing. What did you think you were doing, Alicia? This isn't your style. If your dad hadn't said those mean things about me and my mom and ended my friendship with you, I wouldn't have been trying to prove him wrong. I'm sorry about dad. He's a little harsh sometimes, but you should know you're my best friend, Alicia. Nothing can change that. Then why do you hang out with them instead of me? I'm only doing it to trick my dad. Besides, you don't have to change anything about yourself to prove him wrong. I don't care what you look like. The moonlight danced on Barasa's face, sharpening his features and making him more handsome. Suddenly, Mum walked in on us. So, this is where you've been all along, and I've been looking for you everywhere. Mum freaked out when she noticed my position in Barasa's arms. For some reason, she had never liked him much. Do you want us to lose our jobs as servants, Celestia? His father warned you to stay away from him. As soon as Mum was done yelling, dragged me away from the pool. I couldn't have been more embarrassed. Later that night, she sat me down and talked to me. Honey, life isn't all about wealth, but how to stay fulfilled with whatever you have. I'm disappointed in your actions tonight. When she finished, tears streamed down my cheeks and I hugged her. I'm sorry for everything, Mom. I'll be better. 
and I did become better. I did all my chores diligently while Barasa continued hanging out with me during moments his father couldn't see us. Our friendship grew stronger, transcending beyond rules set by our parents. A few years passed by and Mum fell ill. She was bedridden for weeks while I cared for her. Every day was filled with hopes for her recovery. And one particular day, she told me something that shocked me. Honey, I think it's time we moved out of here into somewhere better. I want to give you the life you deserve. I wasn't a fan of the idea. Moving out meant saying goodbye to Barasa and the horses I'd grown attached to. I needed some space to think. I left Mum alone and dashed to the stables where I found Barasa and told him everything. I don't know if I want to leave you and everything behind yet. Then don't. Don't let your mum take you away from the farm, Alicia. You can stay with me. I'll take care of you. Barasa's words followed me for the rest of the day, and when night reached, I went back to Mum. Mum, I don't think I'm ready to leave the farm yet. But Alessia... I think it'll be better if you let yourself heal here. The nature will give you more peace. <laughs> Fine. You've always been a stubborn child anyways. I love you, Mum. I love you too, baby girl. But there's another thing I need to tell you. Mum grabbed my face and looked at me with an expression I had never seen on her face before. It was fear. There are, um... Some things you don't know about, and don't need to know about yet. What do you mean, Mum? She ignored my question and continued like I hadn't said anything. If anything should happen to me, there's a box of valuables buried next to the cherry tree in the farm. Take it and run away. Do you understand me, child? I was speechless, so Mum shook my shoulders. Do you understand me, Alessia? No, Mum, and you're scaring me. What's happening? You don't need to know, but you'll do what I say, right? I mumbled out a small, right, and watched as her expression shifted to normal in milliseconds. It was scary. Now, honey, come give Mummy another hug. Mum felt strangely better the next morning and dashed to the market to get some dairy products. She put on shades and a wig before doing so, as if her performance the night before hadn't been strange enough. Everything made me so curious, especially when Mum didn't return that night. I panicked and dashed to Barasa with the news. My mum hasn't been back all day, Barasa. I think something happened to her. I've got this. I'll rally some villagers and search the town for her. It's a small town. She can't be far. I joined the villagers in their search. As we ransacked the forest, I felt a hard object under my foot. I picked it up and found that it was an ID with Mom's passport? Her name on it was Nuella Smith, which was different from the Jennifer Howard everyone knew her as. Mom was hiding something, and I could feel it. I noticed a movement to my right and quickly hid the ID in my pocket before turning around to see Barasa emerge from the bushes with a solemn expression. I'm sorry, Alicia, but... We couldn't find your mum. Footprints in the soil suggest she might have run away. I gulped and turned away from Barasa as my eyes watered with tears. I couldn't believe my mum had left me. After that day, life on the farm felt different without mum. I had planned to leave as well, but Barasa persuaded me to stay. You don't have to leave, Alicia. I'll be inheriting the farm in a few years. And by then, I could marry you. And we could live happily ever after. I mean, that's if you want Hearing Barasa say those words made me feel a bit queasy. Of course that's what I want, Barasa. But is that what you want? He gripped my chin and stared at me with such intensity that it made my stomach churn. That's what I've always wanted, Alicia. I've been in love with you since we were kids. I'm in love with you too, Barasa. Barasa kissed me and fireworks went off in my head. Three days later, I was in the coop feeding the chickens when Barasa walked in with a sad look on his face. Alicia, I have something to tell you. I'll be leaving to boarding school this week. Dad enrolled me in one yesterday. Sadness enveloped my entire body as I hugged Barasa. But what about our promise? Don't worry. I'll never forget. Your heart and mine are locked forever. The next morning, Barasa left the farm and we waved at each other with a secret look on our faces, promising to always return to each other. I carried on without Barasa on the farm, even if I constantly continued to feel the lack of his and Mum's presence. The only thing that kept me going was his promise to me. Time passed, and two years later, news of Barasa's return spread like wildfire. I heard Chief Mungi's son will be returning today, and he's now a very handsome man. The girls won't know what hit them. I gave the woman a small smile before hurrying home with the vegetables I had purchased. Chief Mwangi was throwing a big party to celebrate Barasa's return, and I couldn't wait to see him. As soon as I arrived at the mansion, I noticed cars parked all around it. I walked around looking for him when I noticed him kissing a girl on the patio. Many people surrounded him, applauding and yelling. Happy engagement! 
Thank you all. Angela is the prettiest woman I have ever met in my life. My heart broke into a thousand pieces. In disappointment, I tossed the market bags to the ground and fled the scene. Barasa, like Mum, had lied to me. I had no one but myself to rely on. I dashed to the cherry tree Mum mentioned years ago and dug furiously at the soil beside it until my hands hit something. It was a treasure box with a lot of money inside. I quickly packed my bags and left with the treasure chest without telling anyone. I flew to America and began a new life there. Mum's money supported me for years, and I used some of it to start a small agricultural business that grew into something big. I became one of the world's youngest billionaires and the proud owner of Aulis, a food technology firm. One day, I was on my way to work when a woman bumped into me. Hey, watch where you're going. She turned around and I was surprised to see. Mum? Hey, pretty lady. Please, I need a job. I can be your personal maid. Here's my CV. Security suddenly showed up to drag her away. Sorry, ma'am. This crazy lady escaped us. We'll take care of her. No, leave her. I'll take care of her. I took Mum to my office and asked her a lot of questions. Why did you leave me alone on the farm all those years ago? Huh? I don't know you. She couldn't answer any of my questions, and the worst of it all was that she couldn't even recognize me. I took her to the hospital, hoping they could fix her memory issue. I'm afraid there's nothing we can do for your mother. She needs something to trigger her memory. Maybe an impactful event from her past. I tried everything to trigger Mum's memory. I showed her old photos of us together. That looks like me. Took her to a farm, even showed her the ID she dropped all those years ago. Yet, Mum couldn't recognize me. I gave up and settled on taking care of her instead. The stress of caring for Mum and the company took a toll on me, so I took some time off and went horse riding constantly. And one day, I saw Barasa and his wife. She was yelling at him right in the middle of the parking lot. I'm filing for a divorce right away! I was about to ignore them when she raised her arm to slap him, and I couldn't help but swoop in and grab her arm. That's enough! I won't let you assault someone on my property. And who do you think you are? Alessia, Barassa's old friend and owner of the parking lot you're standing on. Of course you're his friend. You both look pathetic. She flung her arm out of my grip and walked away with a menacing look at Barassa. Expect divorce papers and my lawyer. When Angela left, Barassa looked at me. Wow, you've grown and changed so much, Alicia. I wasn't going to remain a servant forever. Barasa had also changed since the last time I saw him, and seeing him now, I realized I no longer cared about him. There was no trace of the love I felt all those years ago. Alicia, about what you saw years ago, Dad forced me to marry Angela as a business transaction. He wanted a deal with her dad. It was nothing serious. I don't care, Barasa. I'm sorry about what your dad did, but I think it's best we move on. I've moved on. You should too. I won't give up on you, Alicia. No matter what it takes, I'll do anything to prove that I still love you. I pulled my arm out of his and walked away. I wasn't letting him back into my life. The next day, I was sitting on the couch watching some STA videos on TV when I heard a knock on my door. I went to see who it was and was surprised to see Barasa standing right on my porch with a bouquet of flowers in his hand. Hey there, thought I'd pay you a visit. How did you find my place? I asked around. Would you let me come in? Fine. Um, make yourself at home. Thank you. Your place looks absolutely beautiful. While we talked and caught up on the past, Mum walked in. Hey, Mum. Meet my friend Barasa. You remember him, right? She gave him a strange look, then approached him and sniffed his scent like a dog. Her pupils dilated and she pointed at Barasa. I know that smell. My memory's suddenly coming back to me. I knew I should be relieved that Mum's memory had returned, but I was offended. I was her daughter, and she couldn't even recognize me. But then she remembered Barasa, whom she didn't even like. She was also acting strangely and scaring Barasa. Hey, Mum, that's enough. No, Alessia, that boy and his father are criminals. That's a lie. You're a crazy woman. I remember everything. I was a CIA agent, undercover on their farm, gathering intelligence on their crimes. They found out and tried to capture me, but I escaped. I fell and hit my head as I ran away from them, and I couldn't remember much else except that some nice people helped me. Wow, that's a lot. Are you sure, Mom? Yes, honey, it's why I wanted us to leave the farm, but Barasa and his father were threatening to take you away from me. I couldn't tell you because I didn't want to get you in trouble. Everything Mum said shocked me to the bones, and I stared at Barasa, who avoided my gaze. Is this all true? She's lying. Can't you see? She left you, 
and I took care of you. No, you didn't. You only wanted her to trust you so you could turn her against me. What? I'm sorry, Alicia, but your mom is going crazy. I'm just going to leave you with Miss Loco here. Suddenly, Barasa sped for the door, and Mom leapt in the air and karate chopped him to the floor. It was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. I never knew Mom had such skills. I've gathered enough intel on you and your father. You're not going anywhere. She rang for someone, and minutes later, suited men in shades showed up to the house. Thank you for your hard work, Noella. The president will reward you for doing a good job. I strolled up to Barasa and gave him a resounding slap. I can't believe you were only playing me. All that talk about love and you suddenly reappearing in my life? It all makes sense now. Barasa's expression instantly shifted to anger, and he seemed nothing like the boy I knew all those years ago. I wasn't playing you at first. I really liked you, but your mom had to go snooping around. Always keep your enemies closer, Dad says, and you and your mom are my enemies. Good. I hope we stay that way. You're a jerk. Enjoy your time in jail. I watched with a smirk as Barasa was dragged into the car and driven away. As soon as he left, I turned to Mum. So, your name's Nuella. I wish you had told me instead of keeping me in the dark. It was for the best, honey. Again, I'm really sorry. I'll spend each day making it up to you. I hope so. I threw my arms around her in a hug, basking in the scent and warmth of her body, which I'd missed. I've missed you so much, Mom. I was really scared you'd never remember me, and then when you did, I got mad that it only happened because of Barasa. I felt like you didn't love me. Don't say that, baby. I love you. And as for my memory, I couldn't control it. But remembering you is the best thing to have ever happened to me. I've missed you too. Mom and I stayed in the hug for several minutes until I remembered someone we hadn't spoken about. What about Chief Monkey? What'll happen to him now? I figure he's already heard about everything and is on the run. But we'll get him. He can't run forever. You're super cool, Mum. The next day, Mum was invited to the White House where she received an award of recognition and excellence from the president. I couldn't have been prouder of her. You know, sometimes our parents did mean the best for us after all. Some people call me the luckiest girl in my small town in Colorado. I was the only child to my successful parents who never wanted me to know what they did for a living. Once, when I was around six, I snuck into dad's office. Dad, what are you doing? Jessica, are you in my office? Where are you? Under your table. I want you to tell me about your job. Dad quickly changed the subject, the same way mom does. I didn't understand, but I couldn't complain because they bought me everything I wanted and more. And then one day, when I was around 10, my parents came back from a busy day and I was so excited to see them because the whole week they spoke about a big surprise they had for me. Jessica, come downstairs. Your surprise is here. As I ran down, I kept imagining that it was the latest iPad I asked for since I was obsessed with the latest tech devices. But when I got down, there was this girl who looked almost like me. Who is this? This is your sister. What? I thought babies come from your tummy, and she's too big to be a baby. So how is she my sister? We adopted her. Jessica, meet Rebecca. And Rebecca, please meet our one and only little princess, Jessica. Rebecca looked at me, and then she stepped forward and suddenly curtsied. Lovely to meet you, Jessica. I didn't know how to react at that moment because my parents never told me they were bringing home a stranger. Nice to meet you too, Rebecca. Rebecca took some time to open up to me, so after a week of having her around, I thought I would do something nice. So, I threw her a treehouse party. But as soon as she stepped in, she suddenly fell down the treehouse. Rebecca! I was shocked out of my mind. I had no idea what had made her suddenly fall like that until I got down and she started screaming. Get away from me! Mom! Dad! This girl started freaking out on me. Her arm was injured and I just wanted to help. Mom and Dad came running to her. Oh my goodness, what happened? Jessica pushed me down. What? I did not push you. Rebecca cried louder, and my parents rushed her to the hospital. I was so confused. Why would she blame me for something that I didn't do? At the hospital, no matter how many times I tried to explain to mom and dad that I didn't do anything, they still doubted me. We brought Rebecca to you because we thought you felt lonely in our big house. And if you didn't like her, you should have just said something instead of just pushing her down. While they were busy lecturing me, mom received a phone call and signaled the dad to take me out of the room. They acted so secretive. 
But I had a bigger problem to worry about than my parents' mysterious life. I had to deal with the little lying Pinocchio, Rebecca. After that incident, I decided to keep my distance from Rebecca and focus on what I loved the most, school. I was the smartest, and all the teachers adored me. But there was one girl who couldn't stand me because she struggled to get high grades. Nancy. If you stare at your score any longer, you might just magically turn into a zero! Nancy, just bring back my results and stop being a bitter loser. You will always stay one step behind me. When Nancy waved the paper in front of my face for me to catch it, Rebecca suddenly tripped her and she fell flat on her face. I don't need you to fight my battles. I disliked Rebecca so much after the stunt she pulled, and now she was trying to save me. That's just crazy. And then during recess while I stood in the line to buy my lunch, Rebecca was right behind me and suddenly speaking to me. I'll tell your parents the truth. You didn't push me. Why did you do that? I did nothing bad to you. When your dad called you their one and only princess, I felt so jealous. Because why did they adopt me when they already have someone they love so much? I'm sorry that you feel that way. But our parents love us both. They were really worried about you after you injured your arm. Rebecca suddenly hugged me and cried on my shoulder. Thank you for calling them our parents. It means a lot. After that, I grew fond of Rebecca, and we became the best sisters ever. Years went by, and then we were in high school. Rebecca and I had a bond that could never be broken. And then one day, <gasps> I found her crying in the bathroom. Rebecca, what happened? Oh, Jessica, everything is going to be ruined now. Hey, talk to me. Tell me what's wrong. My real mother is here. She's the new janitor. Rebecca has been in our lives for so long, I even forgot that she was adopted. That's great news. At least now you know who your real mother is. I've always known who my real mother was. She left me at the orphanage when I was eight, and I was lucky that your parents adopted me then. But now she's here and she wants me back. Rebecca told me not to say anything to mom and dad, but I couldn't stop thinking about this. I loved Rebecca so much, and I didn't want anyone to take her away. So that night, I waited for her to fall asleep, and then I snuck into mom and dad's room. I found Rebecca crying today, but she asked me not to say anything. We are glad you came to us with this, hun. Yes, and don't worry, no one will be taking your sister away. She is our family now. After speaking to my parents, I felt so relieved and was able to finally go to bed. And then the next day, when Rebecca and I got home after school, we found mom and dad in the living room with Rebecca's real mom. Rebecca suddenly looked at me angry and lashed out. I told you to keep it a secret! I… I know, but… But nothing, Jessica! You broke my trust! She ran off to her room, and that was the end of our sister bond. Then the next thing mom and dad said made no sense. Rebecca's mom will be living with us for a while. She wants to get to know Rebecca. And we think it's a spectacular idea. No, mom. She left her when she was just a little girl. Why are you doing this? I was struggling so much back then, and I really didn't want to give her up. Please, she's all that I have. After hearing her story, I felt sorry for Rebecca's mom and accepted mom and dad's decision for her to stay for a while. But Rebecca was not happy at all. The next day at school, Rebecca planted a little surprise for me in my locker. <gasps> Rotten cheese. It made my entire locker smell. <laughs> I see you got my little gift. Rebecca, why are you doing this? You know why. Because you ratted me out. And rats eat rotten cheese. I only told mom and dad to protect you. Now get this cheese out of my locker. Now. Rebecca suddenly pushed me against the locker and spoke to me so harshly. It's like she turned into a monster overnight. I'm done being your friend, you spoiled brat! Rebecca, you are acting out for no reason. After what happened with Rebecca, I wanted to ask my parents to speak to her. But when I got home, she was already there with Nancy. And when I entered, my parents looked upset with me. Jessica, why did you attack Rebecca at school? This is so unlike you. What? She's lying. I would never do something like that. Her friend says she saw the whole thing. They're both lying. Rebecca started crying on Nancy's shoulder, and when my parents weren't looking, Rebecca <laughs> smiled wolfishly at me. I have a very big reputation at school, and I would never lie. Your daughter Jessica acted like a wild barbarian at school today. 
If I'm a barbarian, then <sighs> you are the devil himself, standing here and lying to- That's enough. Now go to your room. This is unacceptable. You're grounded for a week. I couldn't believe my parents didn't believe me. They looked at me like I wasn't their child. And while I was moping about what happened, I heard some voices from outside my bedroom window. When I peeked through my curtain, I saw my parents and Rebecca's mom. I opened my window slightly without them noticing and managed to hear everything they were saying. The girls will soon turn 18 and we need to plan their next step. Oh, I can't wait to get my hands on all that money their parents left them. Yes, I'm tired of playing sweet daddy. I should be on an island enjoying the sea breeze. And I don't have to play the stupid role of being the janitor. I can't believe how smoothly our plan worked. They are now at each other's throats. It's going to be a piece of cake getting them to sign those papers. I couldn't believe what I had just heard. My heart raced as I heard footsteps by my door. I quickly shut my eyes tight as the door opened. Jessica? Jessica? I kept my eyes closed, hoping that she would eventually go away. She's fast asleep. That's good. We should be careful where we have our meetings now. After they closed the door, I opened my eyes and started panicking. I had to speak to Rebecca. The next morning, I overslept. But when I went downstairs, I had to be strong and pretend like I heard nothing. Good morning, sleepyhead. You're up late today. Yeah, I forgot to set my morning alarm. At least I still have time for breakfast. Actually, you don't. We're almost late for school. Okay. I'll just grab an apple. As soon as we entered the school doors, Nancy hung onto Rebecca like glue. Hey, best friend! Rebecca, I need to talk to you. Oh, buzz off, Jessica! You buzz off, Nancy! She's my sister! Adopted sister. Rebecca pushed past me, with Nancy smiling wickedly at me. And when Nancy ran off to go to the bathroom, it was my chance to get Rebecca alone. Rebecca, I have something really important to tell you. Hey, girls! Are you two back to being best sisters? No, and stop following me around school. I don't want people to think that I'm the janitor's daughter. When Rebecca walked off, I tried to go after her, but her so-called real mother held me back. Give her some space. She'll talk to you when she's ready. Just having her hold my arm gave me the chills. After she went off, I knew what I had to do to get Rebecca to hear me out. When it was time for cheerleading practice, I waited for everyone to leave the room, and once the coast was clear, I opened Rebecca's locker. I still remembered her password, and then I quickly searched for her hairbrush, got strands of her hair, and put everything back. I ran to the school science lab, where I thankfully found my science teacher, Mrs. Broody. Jessica, what can I do for you? I need to test these two samples to see if the DNA matches. I gave Mr. Broody a sample of my hair and a sample of Rebecca's hair. Whose hair samples are these? It's mine and Rebecca's. I overheard my parents talk last night and they said some really shocking things. Okay, please don't tell anyone I did this for you. It's against the school policy. I left the samples with Mrs. Broody and the next step was finding out who my real parents were. As soon as I got home after school, I searched for my ID document inside my chest drawer. In that moment when I found it, mom appeared. Jessica, I didn't know you were back from school. Yeah, um, I just got back and I'm going to the library. I felt so awkward around everyone in the house because in my head I knew they were strangers. And as I passed my mom, she suddenly held my hand and I froze. Do you need a ride to the library? No, I need the exercise so I can walk there. I felt so relieved when I got out of the house and I felt like I was being followed. But every time I looked back, there was no one until I noticed our gardener standing next to a dustbin acting like a street person. Mom obviously asked him to wear that disguise and follow me, but I was no fool. I continued to walk towards the library and then ran in and out the back door until I lost Mom's spy guard. When I finally reached the home affairs department, my heart almost stopped when the lady told me that my ID document was fake. How can I find out my real identity? Simple, your fingerprint. You can fake a document, but not a fingerprint. Once my fingerprint was taken, the police suddenly appeared and took me in for questioning. Why am I here? We have been looking for you and your sister for 17 years. When your parents passed away, they left you under the care of the state. But when we went to search for you, you and your sister were nowhere to be found. But all this doesn't make sense. The parents who took care of me gave me everything. 
The people who have been illegally taking care of you have been your uncle and his wife. Your parents had two trust funds. One was to give you and your sister the best life possible as kids. But your fake parents withdrew all that money and the next trust fund is more than millions and will be released when you and your sister turn 18. When the officer was about to tell me what to do next, my phone rang and it was mom. You should come home, Jessica. Something has happened to Rebecca. I immediately ran out of the station after I got mom's call. My sister was the only real family I have, and I would protect her at any cost. When I got back home, the people whom I thought were my parents were waiting for me in the living room with Nancy. What happened to Rebecca? Where is she? We'll tell you once you tell us what you've been up to. What is going on here? Why are you here, Nancy? Because you've been living my life all this time with my parents who sacrificed their time with me to be fake parents to you, all for the sake of money. And now, you will not ruin things for us. Fine, you can have all the money. Just tell me where Rebecca is. I could hear <gasps> Rebecca screaming through the walls. Please, just let her go. You will have to wait until it's her real birthday, which is actually in two days' time. And then, while these wicked money greedy people were smiling wickedly in front of me, a gang of cops busted into the house. I guess Rebecca and I will have our happy birthday after all, while you rot in prison. Rebecca's fake mom was also found and arrested, and my real sister and I lived happily ever after. <laughs> the lesson here, money greedy people always get caught out, but an honest living will take you a long way. Hi, I'm Vera Queen. My genius dad and I had always been the best buddies. And when I was just seven, I helped him build a plane. <laughs> Firecracker, it's not playtime yet. Come, screw this nut for me. You'll see, love. This plane is going to make me super popular. You mean us? We're a team. <laughs> yes, Firecracker, us. Dad was an aerospace engineer, and he was working on inventing a remote-controlled plane. But when he finally thought it was ready and chose to show it to the world, that day, the plane refused to fly. Things were not the same between Mom and Dad after that. Mom began to pick fights with him every day. You silly man! You spent years working on that stupid invention! Now you're a failure! You should crawl up in a hole and stay there! To make things worse, Dad's invention that failed him was all over the news. It broke his heart, and Mom wouldn't even let me comfort him. You poor thing. Must have been hard with Dad forcing you to work on that plane with him. He didn't force me. I loved working with him. Days later, Dad just packed up and left without a goodbye. I was so sad and angry at Mom for making him go away. It didn't help that Mom also began to act like she doesn't remember I exist. Sometimes, she would go to work without dropping me off at school, or forget to keep something for me to eat. She was terrible. One day, we went grocery shopping together, and she met an old friend of hers. Is this your daughter? Yeah, she's so pretty. What's her name again? Um, her name is... Sweetie, what's your name again? Is that a serious question? Real moms don't forget their children's names, ever. I was so angry I left them there and went home. But on getting home, all the anger melted away at the sight of my favorite thing in the world. The baby that would take me places. Ready to fly or still scared. It was the plane I had watched and helped my dad build as a kid. I missed my dad so much. And even though my mom was against it, I hoped that if I fixed the plane, he would come out of hiding and be a proud engineer again. Vera Queen, get out from there this instant! Mom, just a few minutes. I've told you to stop wasting time with that plane. Your dad wouldn't listen too, until it failed him. This is practice for the future, Mom. I want to be an aerospace engineer like Dad. Sounds like a fancy way of saying you want to be a failure like Dad. You will never touch that plane again, or for what? You will make me go away like you did, Dad? What do you even care? You can't even remember my name. Get out or I'll set that plane on fire. At her threat, I left the garage like the devil was after me because I couldn't bear the thought of Dad's hard work going to waste like that. The tension between Mom and I worsened after that. But to my surprise, four days later, she surprised me with a cake for my 16th birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. It warmed my heart, but I turned 16 five days ago, Mom. I know, sweetie, I just remembered. I am so sorry I forgot. Well... I can't reject this yummy looking cake. Then take a bite. The moment I swallowed a few bites, I began to choke. Mom, did you put peanut butter in this? 
Yeah? Why? How could you? I'm allergic to peanut. I... I couldn't say anything else because I lost consciousness. When I woke up, it was in the hospital, with the witch I called my mom crying beside me. I see your plan to kill me failed. Oh, Vera, please don't say that. I completely forgot you have a strong allergy to peanut butter. I swear. You're a big liar. Unless you're sick in the head or something, how can you forget your own child's allergy? Please, let me make it up to you. Let me take you on a trip to Barbados. So you can abandon me at the airport and claim you forgot you had a child? No way! Even though mom seemed genuine, I refused to forgive her. Her explanations just didn't make sense. Two weeks later, mom <gasps> came back with a guy she introduced as Smoke. He will be watching over you, at home and in school. Wait. You got me a nanny. Why? Don't question me. Look, even has a cute dog. His name is Bruno. You just want to make sure I don't go near that plane, don't you? You may as well plant cameras to monitor me. I went to bed fuming. I couldn't stand a stranger looking over my shoulder. Knock, knock. I got you some dinner since you skipped it. Oh, so you're my mommy now? Look, Vera, your mom is not in a very good place right now. Who are you to tell me about my mom? Leave! I am not hungry! Smoke kept the food on the floor before he left, and I devoured everything in seconds. Despite my best efforts, Mom refused to budge on making Smoke leave, and I had almost given up when I noticed something that made me decide to take matters into my own hands. Smoke was in love with my mom! I could clearly see it in his eyes whenever he was talking to her. One day, we had dinner out, and my mom began to choke. <coughs> Smoke flew to her, like freaking Batman! Drink water, ma'am. You don't have to pat her back, mister. I went to do it myself, but mom leaned away from me and further into Smoke. Thanks, Smoke. You're doing it just right. I was mad. I didn't even have enough of my mom to share with someone else. True, she was a meanie, but she was all I had. He had to disappear, like the Smoke he was. So I turned to the dog I could see he loved so much. So Bruno, I'm gonna give you a makeover. <laughs> now you look stunning. Oh. But when I made to stroke the dog, some of his fur began to come off and I was ah! horrified. I felt so guilty that at the sound of my mom and smoke coming in, I ran away to hide in the plane. While I hid, my eyes fell on two disconnected wires. I joined them back and experimentally pressed the remote. Ah! To my shock, after years of trying to revive the plane, it geared to life. It works! I am gonna fly, baby! Knock, knock. I shrank when I saw smoke at the window with Bruno. I am so sorry. I just wanted to change his color so you could get mad enough to leave. I didn't know it would make him shed his fur. Forgive me. Under one condition. You're coming with your mom and I to Barbados this coming holiday. The last thing I wanted to do was join my mom on a trip where she was likely to embarrass me. But if that was what I could do to redeem myself, fine. And that was how I found myself about to board a plane with mom, Bruno, and Smoke. I was quickly uncomfortable with the men that would fly us. Is there a reason why the two of you look like you haven't slept in ages? Oh, don't mind my daughter. Her mouth has no filter. We boarded the plane, and soon we were up in the sky. While Mom and Smoke chatted like an old couple, I was all by myself. Suddenly, the sound of snoring from the cockpit reached my ears. Hey, those pilots are sleeping. I told you they looked extra droopy. Really? That means... Don't listen to her. She just wants to ruin this trip. Mom, I swear this is not a... Silence! Mom and Smoke continued talking, and I felt like weeping because seconds later, our plane was spinning in the air. Oh, 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 oh God, we're gonna die! Attention passengers, please grab the parachute in the compartment above you. May the odds be in your favor. You idiot pilots! I hadn't used a parachute before, but from the movies I had watched, it couldn't be so hard. We all jumped out of the plane, but the movies had deceived me. I couldn't activate the parachute and I just fell. I woke up to something licking my face. Bruno? Good boy. And found myself tangled up in some vines hanging from a tree. There were so many trees! Um, help! Mom! Smoke! Sleepy pilots! Oh god, was mom okay? I didn't know how she landed. Gently, I got down from the tree and gasped when I saw a cluster of eggs half my height. The size of the eggs was pointing to a very giant beast around. I opened my mouth to scream for help, but just then, I saw a huge shadow ahead. It was the head of a dinosaur! I took to my heels with Bruno right behind me. I couldn't tell for how long I had ran before I crashed into someone. Tears of relief filled my eyes when I saw who it was. Mom, it's you! Oh, I am so happy! 
Who are you? You must have hit your head somewhere. It's me, Vera. Stay away from me! And just like that, she took off running like a freaking antelope. Bruno chased after her. I made to follow, but I tripped over some really hard, giant poop and fell flat on my face. Oh! Ah! Don't eat me! I swear, I am very bitter. Eat you? What are you talking about? I scrambled to my feet and my jaw dropped. The dinosaur had a human body. Smoke? I don't know if it's evolution or something, but you kind of have a dinosaur head. What? Oh, must have fallen on me when I fell. I think this place is an abandoned site for shooting a Jurassic movie. Plastic dino eggs, plastic dino poop. I get it. Look, my mom, I just saw her and she took off like she doesn't know who I am. Bruno is with her too. Oh no, we have to find them. We searched endlessly for hours, and when it began to get dark, I began to lose hope. Oh, Mom! Will I ever see her again? I know she's the worst, but I still love her! You know, your mom doesn't forget things about you because she wants to. Yeah, it's because she doesn't care. No, she has early onset dementia. Forgetting things is a part of it, and that's why she hired me. Not to look after you, but her also. I am her live-in nurse. Wait, all this while? She's just been suffering from memory loss? She won't remember me again? I wanted to tell you earlier that night in your room, cause she wouldn't. But her forgetting you today might just be the trauma of falling out of the plane. My heart was in shreds for making things difficult for my already sick mom. What if I never see her again? Smoke comforted me and asked we rest in a small clearing. We had just made a fire when the sound of something snorting behind us made us tremble. Smoke was before me in a flash like freaking commando. It's a wild boar. Run. I'll distract it. I was about to run, but the sight of a dinosaur costume on the ground gave me an idea. Roar! I am gonna have pork for dinner! To my delight, the pig turned and ran with its ears tucked in. <laughs> How was that roar? Dinosaurs don't roar, but thanks for saving my life. He wanted to save mine first, so thanks too. For the rest of the night, I talked with Smoke, and I found he was a super cool guy. When morning came, we were ready to look for mom again, but we didn't know where to start. Then I noticed some bright orange fur on the grass. <gasps> look, that's Bruno's fur! It leaves a trail. Might lead to your mom. We did, and just as we were about to enter a clearing, someone pounced on Smoke uh. from behind. It was... Mom! Oh, Vera! Smoke! I rushed to her and hugged her, and Mom hugged me too. Mom, I am so sorry for being mad at you. You should have just told me you were sick. Oh dear, I didn't want you to worry. But when I forgot your allergy, I got scared and had to call Smoke to help. How do we get back home from here? There's no sign of the plane or pilots anywhere. Maybe we can get a flight home. Vera, he just said we can't find the plane. I took out the remote from my plane and pressed the power button. Just watch, Mom. Have faith and pray. It took two hours, but like a dream come true, my plane landed in the clearing without a human pilot. Mom and Smoke's jaws dropped to the ground. Unbelievable! Oh. You did it! Just as we had settled in, the droopy-eyed pilots came out of the bush at full speed. Please, please take us with you. We were all mad at them for the trouble we went through, but we let them in anyway. At home, our yard filled with reporters and the police. They had seen my plane fly off without a pilot and everyone wanted to know about it. Miss Vera, please say something for the millions of people watching you now. Dad, if you're watching this, I want you to see that I have proved the world wrong. Your remote-controlled plane is not a joke. Please, come back home. Oh, Vera, I am so sorry I didn't believe you or your dad. I was proud too. But sadly, Dad didn't show up that day. However, thanks to my invention, after I graduated high school, I got a scholarship to study aerospace engineering at a big university just like I dreamed. Smoke and Mom saw me off on my first day. Don't worry, I'll take care of Mom. Smoke and Mom were dating now, and I couldn't have asked for a better stepdad to be. I know you're Mr. Capable. Thanks. I was talking about Bruno. What? <laughs> Just then, I saw a man staring at us through his creepy shades. He hid like an ostrich when I looked his way. I brushed it off, and after taking some pictures with Mom and Smoke, we bade each other goodbye. As I was making my way to the campus, the spooky guy from before began to follow me. Hey, creep! What do you want? I almost fainted when he pulled off his shades. My firecracker. You're still as pretty and feisty as ever. 
dad had a lot of explaining to do. But for now, I rushed into his arms. I knew you'd come back. My lesson from all this is treat everyone with kindness because just a little bit of goodness can go a long way. What else did you learn? Please share in the comment section below. I will be reading. My parents were so rich and loved themselves so much that they even built a statue of themselves. We had everything money could buy and more. I had like a zillion toys and I even had my own theme park, but I was never interested in their splashy lifestyle. I've always had a curious mind. Like for example, I couldn't get my mind off what was behind that red door that mom and dad forbid me from opening. So sometimes I would just sit and look at it. Samantha, you must be the only child on this planet who sits and gazes at a door when you have a room filled with toys. Well, I was wondering if maybe I could look through the peeping hole just once. But you know the rules, Samantha. Please? Fine, just one peek. I'm counting till five. Okay, time's up. No matter how much my parents wanted me to be like the other kids, fun and playful, I couldn't help but question everything around me. Like, why are ants so tiny? Or why do we all have two legs and not five? Even my teachers didn't get me. Okay, class, let's spell because. Daddy eats cold apples under suey elephant. Uh, yes, Samantha. Why does Betty eat cold apples under an elephant? Oh, Samantha, you're the special one, aren't you? I didn't care how people looked at me because I knew I was meant for something great. And then one day when I was around 10, I discovered my passion after watching Mira, the <laughs> royal detective. I wanted to be just like her. My parents even got me my very own detective magnifying glass, but they instantly regretted it during one of their lavish parties. Instead of dressing up in a frilly dress taking selfies like the other girls, I walked around with my detective costume and magnifying glass. And as I was searching for clues to unravel anything mysterious, my detective skills took me into Mr. Shaquille's bag. He worked with my parents. And oh boy was I surprised to find out what he had inside. Excuse me, sir. What are you doing with this? You inquisitive little girl. What are you doing in my bag? And bring back my teddy. He acted like a little baby the way he hugged the teddy. It was hilarious. <laughs> and then mom and dad took my hand. That is enough, young lady. Are you trying to ruin our party? I was just playing my favorite game, dad. Give me that. <laughs> no more detective games for you, young lady. But mom, that's what I love doing. Enough. My parents locked me in my room for the rest of the party. I felt such a burning rage towards them. And what they didn't know is that I knew how to unlock my room door with my hairpin, something I've been practicing for when I become a real detective. I checked if the coast was clear and slid my way downstairs. And no, I was not going back to the party. Since my parents took away my magnifying glass, I was gonna go into the forbidden door. And once I unlocked the red door with my hairpin, I was shocked to find a tall shelf with lots of files. I was so disappointed. I was hoping to find a room full of candy or diamonds or something interesting since I was never allowed in here. And then suddenly, a photograph fell off from one of the files. And when I picked it up, it was a picture of a young girl who looked like she was my age. Why do my parents have a picture of a strange girl? While I was studying the picture, I heard footsteps. So I quickly closed the door and switched off the light, waiting for the person to go away. Ah, <sighs> that was close. I sat looking at the photo every day, almost wishing it could talk back to me and tell me who she was. All sorts of things went through my mind. Like, was she my sister? But then why would they hide her away? Was she a long lost cousin? It definitely couldn't be an old photo of mom since the girl had rare blue eyes. It was all useless, unless I was brave enough to ask my parents, which I wasn't. I eventually forgot about the picture and I stopped playing detective. It was all just a big fantasy. Years passed and then I was in high school and my friend Tanya and I were the only two without boyfriends because no hot guy wanted intelligent girls with bags heavy with books. Oh, if only. I know, but they will never go for us because we're too smart for them. I usually snapped out of drooling over hot guys, but my friend Tanya, well, she was so desperate for love that she even stalked the football captain on Facebook, pretending to be some hot supermodel. So, does the captain want to meet you in real life yet? No, oh, you know that can't happen. With my big teeth, small eyes, and pimply face, who would ever like me? Hey, remember what I always tell you. Love yourself first before anyone else can. You're such a wise person. Thank you. I had deep love for Tanya. We only met in high school, but it felt like we'd known each other for a lifetime. I usually took a bus home with Tanya after school, but this time around my parents were waiting for me because apparently they wanted to celebrate some business deal dad made. Our lives are going to be even more perfect now, but we already have so much. Money can never be enough, my dear Sammy. 
Once you get the taste of making your own money one day, you will want more and more. That sounded so absurd. And then when the waitress came to take our order, my parents froze. And so did I, because her eyes looked exactly like the girl from the picture I found years ago. You. Sorry? We, we actually should get going. But I didn't take- Samantha, come on, let's go. My parents pulled me with them, and the girl looked so confused, and so was I. What was that about? Nothing, dear. I just felt a little sick, that's all. You're lying. I'm not five years old anymore. You two freaked out when you saw that girl. Samantha, when we tell you it's nothing, it is nothing. Now please shush. I felt so upset with my parents. They were definitely hiding something, and I was ready to put on my detective cap again and get back into the secret room. The next morning, I pretended to be sick. Sammy, it's getting late. It's time for school. I don't feel so good. Can I please stay in bed today? But you don't have a temperature. Please, Mom. I think I have a stomach bug. Okay, I'll ask the maid to keep an eye on you. I waited for my parents to go to their oil company they spent most of their days at, and then I went downstairs to check if our maid was around. It was so strange, but I guess it was pure luck because I found the maid fast asleep on the sofa. Hmm. She must have had a late night. I ran downstairs to the red door, but froze when I saw the door slightly opened. And when I got closer, my heart pounded so hard when I saw the back of someone's blonde head. What the freaking chickens? Who, who are you? When he turned around, the air in my lungs choked. This guy was gorgeous, but what was he doing in our house? He could be like a model in a hot magazine or something. What are you doing here? I live here. You have five seconds to get out or else I'm calling the cops. No, wait. I was sitting here under investigation. You and your family were at a restaurant yesterday and acted strangely towards the waitress. Uh, how do you know that? That girl was robbed of all of her parents' assets after she lost them. And when she was two, she was left at an orphanage. The caregivers found out that her parents were actually millionaires and they left their only child all their fortunes. Okay, and how does that connect to us? All the girl's assets were embezzled from her family name and company. The only way she can find justice is if we help her find a memory card, which has all the encryptions to her assets. I still don't understand how all this connects to my family. Deep down, I was scared to admit that this strange guy was maybe right. My parents might be the fraudsters. Well, their reaction yesterday triggered the girl and she contacted the CIA, who have been working on this case for years. If you know anything, you have to let us know. I started sweating and I felt so anxious when he questioned me. And then he suddenly called me as I didn't realize I was about to faint. Hey, are you alright? Can we get out of here? I feel a little nauseous. When we were in my room, I had to do the right thing. I showed him the picture. I found this some years back, in the same room downstairs. It's the same girl from the restaurant. You know what this means, right? It's just a picture. Your parents might be the criminals. I broke down crying at the sound of the truth, and the handsome, strained guy in front of me comforted me. I won't let anything happen to you. My name is Jake, and this is my number. If you see a memory card that your parents are very frantic about, call me. Thank you, Jake. I'm Samantha, and I really don't want my parents to go to jail. I know. But this girl they stole from has been struggling for a very long time. You can use the front door. My maid is fast asleep. Oops, I forgot about that. I saw her in the kitchen and sprinkled some sleeping potion around her. She'll be up after an hour or so. With that, he jumped out my window and disappeared like some kind of Batman. After hearing everything that Jake said, I was never the same again. The thought of my parents being criminals scared me, but ending up in prison was even worse. What would happen to me? Samantha! Samantha! It's your turn to go up to the board. I was not myself, and there was no way I could go up and do any calculations on the board. My life was falling apart. Samantha, what's up with you? I looked at Tanya, and I wanted to tell her everything. But instead, I just started crying. <laughs> Talk to me. Everything at home is falling apart. I'm sorry. Do you want to talk about it? I was sent home early that day, and I pulled myself together and searched the entire secret room for the memory card, and found nothing but paperwork of different accounts, but none of it was in my parents' name. Our life was a lie, and the truth had to come out somehow. Later that night, my parents had Mr. Shaquille over for dinner, and he still carried his bag with his pink teddy everywhere with him. I usually like to annoy him by accidentally touching his bag every time he was around. Do you mind? <laughs> Are you still in love with your silly teddy bear? It's made out of cushion. It's not going to break. Samantha, watch your words. Mr. Shaq Yell is much older than you. 
I'm sorry, but I think it's funny that a man his age would love a pink teddy bear so much. Unless he has, like, treasure hidden in there. <laughs> My parents gazed at Mr. Shaquille, gulping like they were guilty about something. I think it's almost time for you to go to bed, Samantha. I didn't hesitate to follow Mom's orders, because I had to call Jake. Hi, I think I know where that memory card is. Great, I'll meet you at midnight, by your window. I was so anxious about seeing Jake again, and actually exposing my parents. When he finally appeared at my window, I felt all kinds of butterflies swimming in my stomach. I was so crushing on him. Okay, we have to be very careful that no one hears us. Yeah, I know that, but the memory card is not here. I think it's in Mr. Shaquille's teddy bear. I can take you to his house. No, I don't want you getting into any trouble. You are safer here. This has been my childhood dream. I'm coming with you. And besides, you need me to find the directions. Okay then, I guess you're the leader. Jake had his car parked outside, and I was so nervous about this mission, but a part of me knew this was exactly what I was meant to do. Wow, you really are like Batman. Your car even looks like the Batmobile. <laughs> you're funny, but also cute. My face turned so red when he said that. When we reached Mr. Shaquille's house, we had two problems. His bodyguards and his scary dogs who growled at the gate, so we hid in the bushes. There's no way we can get it with all that security. That's why I always carry an extra dose of my sleeping potion. <laughs> you are my age, right? Yep, I go to school too. My uncle helped me become an intern with the CIA. Cool, right? So cool. When I was a child, I used to pretend I was a detective. I was the same, so I guess I wasn't the only weird one. Dogs are barking. I think they know we're here. Don't worry, I got this. Jake went closer to the gate. He got the dogs to sniff his hand, and they immediately fell asleep. And then he climbed the tree, jumped onto the roof, and started sprinkling the potion on all the bodyguards. Wow, he is so amazing. As we entered Mr. Shaquille's room, the first thing I spotted was a freaking toilet pan next to his bedside. And when Jake saw it, we wanted to burst out laughing, but we held it in. I think I see the teddy bear. He's cuddling it. Great. It was nerve-wracking watching Jake pull the bear slowly out of Mr. Shaquille's hand, and then suddenly he sat up awake, but his eye mask was still on. Who's there? My heart pounded <gasps> so much, but then I remembered the potion dust Jake shared with me, and I sprinkled it on Mr. Shaquille, and he dozed off immediately. Well done, Detective Samantha. We left Mr. Shaquille's mansion, and later Jake parked at a quiet parking lot where we tore open the teddy and found the memory card. Bingo. What will happen now? I hand this over to my chief officer, and your parents and Mr. Sheikh Yell will unfortunately be arrested. Hey, don't worry. I told you I won't let anything happen to you. When I got back home, the police were already there. I ran inside to see my parents, and they were so mad at me. Mom? <laughs> Dad? Samantha, what did you do? We gave you everything! You ungrateful child! I'm sorry, but I didn't want to live a lie anymore. After the cops took my parents, the girl from the restaurant appeared. Hi, I'm Jessica. Jake told me that you helped him. Thank you so much. I was taken back when she hugged me, and then a part of me didn't feel so bad for exposing my parents, because an innocent person finally got her justice. I'm sure you're going to move into the mansion. I'll just get my stuff. You don't have to leave. What? This is your mansion. I have experienced the pain of not having parents and a home. Life can really humble a person. I would never want to see a good person suffer. Thank you so much. Even though my parents were not present, I still had the chance to be with my friends and continue with school. You know what you should do? You should write a book. <laughs> Maybe I will, but what I'd like you to do is put on your real face on social media, because there is nothing better than the real you. Tanya eventually took my advice and even ended up having a real date with her crush. Some of my dreams also came true. Jake got me an internship spot with the CIA, and I was so good at my job. I think the diamond is in the bottle the suspect always carries around. Well, Samantha, I think you might be right. But all of my dreams came true when... Would you like to go out with me? Hmm, it depends, Detective Jake. On... It depends on what you know about me so far. Well, I know you like Mira, the royal detective. And... I know you like me, too. You know me well. Hi, my name is Maya, and I was born and brought up in India until one day mom's cleaning agency found her a job in the USA. I was excited about the idea, but when we got there, I felt like an ant in a giant's hand. Don't forget to like and subscribe. When we got to our new house in the US, I had several massive suitcases filled with all the clothes I designed using mom's old Saudis. I told you to cut down on your baggage. 
I can squeeze them in somehow. After an hour of organizing my room, I went outside to feel the American breeze. That's when I saw a pram rolling across the road and a car speeding toward it. Somebody, help! I leaped into the air and got the pram, strolling the woman's baby safely to her. Oh, thank you so much. I owe you. No, don't worry about Call that. Call that number or come to the address. When I looked at the card, I was blown out of my mind. She was the CEO of MM, the best designer in USA. Her designs were a big inspiration to me. But when I showed my mom the card, <laughs> she wasn't happy at all. Tomorrow, I am going to meet her and show her my designs. Tomorrow, you will go to school. And when you graduate, Raj will marry you. The end. I have told you before, I'll choose my husband, not you. The real end. With that, I walked away from her. The next day, she enrolled me in a nearby school, and I wasn't even nervous until I walked in and realized how tall everyone else was. When the girls approached me, I almost puked because their dress and color combination was blindingly outrageous. I am Lisa. Everyone new here has to join my fashion club. Or you roll with the unpopular kids. Uh, i rather roll with the unpopular kids than join a Barbie doll club. What? I'm a student to the best fashion designer in the world! Well, either you're a horrible student, or she's a horrible teacher. You... you're dead meat! It wasn't my intention to make her angry, it just happened. But I didn't dwell on it much because the next day, Mom announced my 17th birthday would be celebrated at a really fancy restaurant. Seriously, did you hit the jackpot? Just get anything. Who are you and what have you done to my mother? I ordered food as mom asked me to. It felt too good to be true that my mom would lavish money like this. And it was. Hope the food was as tasty as it was expensive. I knew you were too cheap to pay for this. Dear, Raj just wanted to celebrate with us. At this point, I was desperate for mom and Raj to stop this marriage stuff. So I said and did the craziest thing. Uh, did I tell you, mom? That I have a boyfriend? What? what? I turned around in my seat and grabbed a random young guy about to walk past our table. Babe! Babe! We're right here! Uh... Help me out, please! You're late! Uh, yeah. Traffic. Meet my boyfriend. Hi, I'm Denver. My mom glared at the hand like it was a snake, and Raj got up with a red face. I have had enough insults from this little girl. Then maybe look for an older girl. Like, for example, my mom. Raj went redder in the face and stormed away from the table. Raj, please wait. With them gone, I could finally focus on the guy. And he was such a beauty. Thanks. And sorry for that. You owe me one. The restaurant door chimed to indicate someone coming in. And Denver's eyes went wide when he glanced toward the door. Um, sure. Maybe later, I... And you have to repay it now. Then he grabbed me and kissed me smack on the mouth. My stalker is here. Please, play along. Denver, who's this? It was the bad fashion sense girl, a.k.a. Lisa. Hey, Lisa. She's my girlfriend. Oh, if it's not Miss Big Mouth! We should go now. You didn't have to kiss me, and I don't think it's nice leaving her that way. Sorry about that, but Lisa just wouldn't take no for an answer. Still... Hey, she was mean to you, too. Return evil to no one. I imagined Lisa standing up at the deserted table with a face full of soup, and I felt pity for her. Whoa, you're bold as well as kind? Nice. I am going back in. A black limo pulled up just then, effectively distracting me. Well, that's my ride. I'm Denver, by the way. And thanks for today. Thanks, too. I am Maya. I watched in astonishment as he slid my phone out of my hand and typed in his number, calling his phone right after. Gotta hurry. See you soon, Maya. After he left, I made my way home, where the tension between my mom and I was like a freaking tornado. But thanks to Denver, I didn't have to brood about it. After we met, he and I were always conversing on the phone or via text till we met up a week later. My stepdad calls me bro, not son. What's wrong? Um, it's just a text. You have a boyfriend? What? No, no, it was my mom. She cut off my allowance. 
I was hoping to get a sewing machine with my savings and what she was supposed to give this month. You make clothes? To my surprise, he looked pretty excited when I talked about my talent and when I showed him some of my sketches. He literally whooped. Woo! This is Maya. My mom has to meet you. What? Why? Come with me, like right now. Denver's house was a gigantic mansion. It could swallow our house a hundred times over. Once we got inside, he called for his mom. Mom! The answer to our prayer is here. My jaw fell to the ground in shock when his mom came out. It was May Morris. It's you! Finally! What? You know her? I invited her here. She's the girl that risked her life for Jim last month. <gasps> She's the one who got Lisa off my neck last week. They looked back at me with stars in their eyes. Maze was the most sparkly when Denver told her I could design too. She then looked my sketches over and beamed at me. Mamma mia! These designs are wonderful. Would you like to work with me to create a new fashion line? I'll richly reward you. What? Haven't you been so happy you fainted? That's what happened. The next weekend, May took me to her fashion house and introduced me to her team of aspiring fashion designers. I was shocked to see Lisa amongst them. She glared at me all through the introduction. All right, theme for today, wedding gowns. Like everyone else, I quickly began work on the material I had been given. It was a white wedding gown, and some hours later, my colleagues were staring at it. This dress is hot. Thanks. Cool. Smiling, I looked over to where Lisa was, and she seemed to be having difficulty with her design. Need help? Not from you. Suit yourself. Soon, it was time for our lunch break, so we filed out of the workroom. Some minutes after eating, we returned to the workroom. I saw my gown and screeched. Who threw black dye on my gown? I knew it was Lisa. She didn't even hide it with the big smirk on her face. May Morph is coming in five minutes. What will you do? Staring at the black that streaked the dress, I got an idea. I grabbed several colors of dye from the dye cabinet. In minutes, I turned the white wedding gown into a rainbow colored gown. Almost everyone was gaping at the dress when May Morif walked in. Mamma mia, who did this? Maya, you are going places. I was overjoyed. When work closed for that day, I was prepared to go home when Lisa blocked the doorway. Truce? You tried to ruin my dress. But it turned out to be a beauty instead, hmm? She was right. In fact, May had given me the go-ahead to lead the team in designing a line of clothes that would be under my chosen designer name. It was with that excitement that I said what I shouldn't have. Denver and I aren't even dating. I went on blabbing about everything. I should have known it would come flying right back at my face. After that day, Lisa glued herself to me. We would go to the fashion house together after school hours, and she even helped me lie to my mom when she asked me why I was always home later than usual. One day, Lisa and I were at the school gate waiting for a cab to take us to our workplace when a guy in all black pulled up in a brand new motorcycle. Denver! Hi, girls. Surprised to see you two together. We're friends now! Maya, can you and I hang out today? There's this really cool arcade. How I wanted to say yes, but Lisa gripped me even tighter than as if to warn me. She can't. We're going to work. Maya, say something. Maybe next time? Denver looked at me for what felt like forever, then shrugged back on his helmet. Be careful who you choose as friends, Maya Jai. You said you weren't dating. What was that? We weren't, but maybe he wants us to. You big fool! Well, needless to say, she reverted to being a jerk. Days flew by, and soon... The day for the runway show was just a day away. As this was my big day, I saw it fit to tell my mom what I'd been up to. Mom, I have to tell you something. Like how you have been a lying, disobedient child? Mom! Your pink-haired friend told me everything. It felt like my legs were stuck to the floor. Lisa. Mom, I- You step out of this house, don't come back. This is my lifelong dream. And if you want to stand in my way, then maybe you can throw my bags out when I'm back. Maya! To get my mind off worries about my mom, I threw myself into work that day. Soon, all my colleagues left, and it was time to close. Hey, can I stay a little longer, please? All right, but I have to stay. My mom told me to lock up. Aye, aye, Captain. 
Hurry up, one-eyed pirate. <laughs> <laughs> Denver, I am sorry about the last time. I just couldn't leave her there. It's okay. I know how manipulative Lisa can be. Why do you hate her so much? She's just bad news. Anyway, how can I help? Working with Denver was a sweet experience. Soon, it was dark. Come on, I'll take you home now. <sighs> I am not even sure I have a home anymore. What do you mean? I told him everything and begged to stay here. The building had some sweets and a stocked fridge I could survive on. Denver reluctantly left, promising to come back early tomorrow morning. The next morning, I went to the studio where the dresses were kept, and I almost fainted with what I saw. All the dresses were shredded at the hem, and Lisa was in the middle of shredding the last one. No one was supposed to be here! Lisa, you just destroyed all of our hard work with a pair of scissors! Why? Because I hate you! I'll call the cops. You have no proof! Are you sure, Lisa? Denver! Lisa was arrested, and Mae Morif was in pieces. I'm done for! What do we do, Maya? I don't know. Staring at the ruins of my hard work and the thought of mom not welcoming me home combined made me tear up. But before I could let out a wail, Denver took my hand. If you could turn a stain on a dress to a glamorous design, you can do some magic here as well. I believe in you, Maya Jai. His soft words sent a boost of confidence through me, and I suddenly got an inspiration. Hey, we can turn the shredded parts into ruffles. To illustrate, I made a really quick sketch. Awesome! Cool! Wow. wow! But we have so little time! Perhaps I can help? Mom! 20 years ago, I tried to be a big shot singer, and I failed. I just wanted to protect you from the same heartbreak I felt then. But honey, your story doesn't have to be my story. I'm so sorry. It was my first time to hear that. It made sense now why she had been so adamant against my dreams. Well, want to come and rewrite your story with me? I would love to. Everyone got to work. We completed the designs in a few hours. The crowd went wild with excitement when the models got on stage wearing the beautiful dresses. Everything was like a sweet dream with my mom now rooting for me and Denver cheering right beside her. Maybe after this, we can make the boyfriend-girlfriend thing official? What? What? Hey. You think I'll take any random girl out? Please, say yes. Of course, I will say yes. But first things first. And if my son plays his cards well, my future daughter-in-law, Maya Jai! Thanks to May Morif's opening words, I was read as a tomato throughout my address. After I graduated high school, May gifted me my own fashion house and boutique, and I moved my mom and me to a bigger, better house. Told you to pack as many suitcases as you could, Mom. Oh, Maya, <laughs> this bedroom alone would swallow our former house. Hi, everyone. I'm Felix, and I was born with the weirdest allergy, an allergy to dust. It had a weird smell that always made me sneeze uncontrollably. And as if that wasn't weird enough, I also came from a family of detectives. My paternal great-grandparents were FBI agents. They had a son who became a CIA agent and married another agent, after which the two had a son, my dad, who also became a CIA agent, and fell in love with my mother, a private investigator whose parents were both FBI agents and whose grandfather worked as a KGB spy during the World War. Then they both had me, the handsome one, and my sister, the ugly duckling who was a huge pain in my butt. Stop bumping into me! Stop being so close to me. Get your own tree. For as long as I could remember, Mum and Dad had been training Maude and I to take after them as detectives. Just like the entire family was. Maude did pretty well, but I wasn't so great. I was very clumsy and I couldn't help it no matter how hard I tried. Do I really have to be a detective? I hate spying on people. Don't say that. We're giving you basic life skills in case anything bad ever happens. Never trust anyone. Ever. Uh, my parents didn't trust anyone around them, and because of that, we barely had any friends. In fact, the first time I made my first friend, they chased him away with all their weirdness. Who gave you the chocolate and sent you? The Mafia? The KGB? Answers now! Uh, my granny? After that day, I never saw him again, and I was pretty mad at them, but I got over it quickly. Meanwhile, at school, I loved to spend most of my time in my favorite place, the lab, where I could study dust particles and develop a cure for my allergy. One day, I was brainstorming when a girl sneaked up behind me. Hey, what you doing? And holy smoke, she was pretty. Whoa, I, um, 
didn't see you there. I'm Felix. I mean, Felix. Sorry. God, I wish the ground could open up and swallow me. Didn't have any conversation skills with girls because my parents' distrust chased everyone away. <laughs> I'm Diana, and I'm a new student. My parents just moved here. What brings them to Cottingwood? Uh, just work. So, what are you busy with? I have an allergy to dust, so I'm trying to come up with a cure. Whoa, that's super cool! Can I touch? Um, sure. After that day, Diana and I became super tight friends. We sat next to each other on the school bus, and she waved goodbye to me whenever it dropped me off first. One day, I was on my way home from the bus when I ran into Maude at the store. Thought you were Voldemort. You shouldn't be sneaking in on people with that face. Says the nerd. By the way, who's the girl you were waving at? Hmm, she's called None of Your Business. I walked away from her before she could say anything more. The next morning, I missed the school bus and had to walk all the way to school. On my way, I bumped into Diana. Hey, you missed the bus too. Yeah, seems like we're both unlucky. We walked to school together until we came across a miniature diamond-crusted Santa, sitting quaintly in a show glass in the middle of the town square. What's that? It's a Cottingwood Christmas tradition. Santa is rumored to be from here, so this was built in his honor. Everyone believes that there has been a lot of good fortune to the town since this was erected, especially with Christmas approaching. It looks so valuable. Is it safe to leave something like that out here? It's guarded by security, so I doubt it'll get stolen. What a super interesting tradition. I love your town. Christmas here will be the best. Come on, let's go, or we'll be late. Diana and I rushed to the school, and later, when we were on our way back, we noticed the crowd had gathered around the statue we had been talking about this morning. Curious, I asked someone what all the fuss was. Our Santa relic has been stolen! How? It was just here this morning. Felix showed it to me. Well, someone's stolen it. This Christmas is going to be bad. Why would anyone steal Santa? The entire town was in turmoil. When I got home that day, my parents also seemed stressed about the entire situation. This has never happened before. Who'd steal Santa? I bet it's those new neighbors. It's not a coincidence that Santa suddenly goes missing when they moved here. What new neighbors are you talking about, Mom? I really hoped she wasn't referring to Diana's family. Here. Mom suddenly whipped out her phone and shoved it in my face. To my surprise, it was. How do you already have their pictures? When they moved in, I did some background check. Get this, they moved out of their old town within two months of staying there. They've been doing so with all other towns for years. Maybe they have their reasons. Not everyone is evil, Mom. Suddenly, Maud appeared behind me and looked at the picture on the phone. Hey, that's your little girl? She's not my little anything. Shut up, Maud. I tried to shush Maud, but Mom and Dad already heard her, and soon enough their attention was on me. Felix, it's time you went on a mission with your sister. Your mission will be this girlfriend of yours. You'll use your friendship with her to investigate her family and find clues connecting them to the robbery. Huh? What? I'm not doing anything. And she's not my girlfriend. If you don't, we'll have to do it ourselves. I couldn't let that happen. My parents were super weird when they didn't trust someone, and they could make me lose my friendship with Diana. I had to agree to the mission. Spying on Diana behind her back was really hard. I felt like a terrible friend, and each time she asked if something was wrong. But I knew I couldn't even tell her the truth. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Don't worry. Then one day, she asked me out to dinner with her family, and I agreed. After all, this was what mom and dad wanted, right? If I could establish Diana's innocence, they'd be off her back. Dinner with Diana and her parents was fun. They were pretty cool people who showed actual interest in my science experiments, unlike mom and dad. Felix, right? Diana said you were a scientist developing some sort of cure? How's that coming along? I'm actually close to finishing it. I just need some ghost orchid seeds, but they're hard to find around here. You're just in luck, kid. I have some from our trip to Cuba. My husband and I are globetrotting reporters, so I frequently collect souvenirs from each country we visit. That explained Mum's discovery about them moving from one town to another in a short time. Really? That's awesome! After the dinner, I followed Diana's mom to her room to get the seeds, and on my way out, I came across a door that got me really curious. It had a huge keep off sign pasted to it. I wondered what was in there, but I opened the door and was attacked by a cloud of dust. My allergy struck in, and I started to sneeze uncontrollably. At that moment, Diana walked in on me and ran over to my side to help. Oh, Felix! What's wrong? Are you alright? She looked around until her gaze settled upon the open room in front of us, and she turned to me with a frown. Snooping around my house? I I can't explain. It's Santa. Santa? You think I stole it? You're a jerk, Felix, and I want you to leave my house this instant! 
She had a really mad look on her face that I had never seen before, and I had to leave. When I got out, my sneezing stopped and I felt a little better, so I went home ashamed and angry at my parents for ruining another friendship for me. But this was the last time. As soon as I got home, I found mom and dad waiting for me with high expectations on their faces. Well, how was it? Did you find anything incriminating? God, they were beginning to annoy me to no end. No, I found nothing. And thanks to you guys, you've ruined another friendship for me. Honey. Leave me alone. I ran up to my room. The next day when I got to school, I searched around for Diana and finally found her in the cafeteria, alone at a table, and approached her. Diana, about yesterday, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to snoop around your house. I'm also sorry for yelling at you like that. I didn't mean to. It's just that the room you opened is an old basement with a rodent problem from the previous tenants, and we didn't want an infestation in the main house before the pest control people could arrive. Ugh, I understand. I really hate rats. Right? They're so tiny and annoying. Diana and I reconciled and became inseparable. <laughs> she always came over to my house. Dad and Mom never said anything about it. Guess that, after my attitude from that day, they felt quite repentant. But Maud, she was a constant pest and always had something to say. Oh, look, it's the nerd and his girlfriend. What are you two up to this time? Back off, Smeagol. Nothing here is for your small brain. Maud laughed as she picked a tube of some chemicals I just mixed and sniffed it. Mmm, smells like vanilla ice cream. I wonder what it tastes like. No, no, Maud. That's my allergy antidote. It's still Maud, in progress. No! Don't... Before we could finish our sentences, Maud took a small sip and Diana and I stared at her curiously. Are you all right, Maud? You weren't supposed to drink that. I wasn't done with it yet. Calm down, Albert Einstein. It was just a sip. I... What's that smell? Suddenly, Maud's nose started to grow red and she began to sneeze a lot. What smell? <laughs> that awful scent! Oh, I need to get out of here! Maud bolted from the room, and throughout the day, whenever she came close to me or my room, she sneezed like crazy. As a result, she began to avoid me and claimed that she was allergic to me. Typical Maud. Now I was tasked with making an antidote for her, too. During the week, I got so busy with developing the antidotes that I missed Mum and Dad's presence in my room one day. Oh, I uh, didn't see you two there. Honey, your mom and I have been thinking of a way to show you how sorry we are about that day. Why don't you invite Diana and her parents over for lunch? We'd like to know our neighbors a little better. Really? Yes, Felix. I think it will be a great bonding moment for everyone. I phoned Diana excitedly and asked if her parents could come have lunch with mine. She quickly asked them and they all agreed to come over. During the lunch, Maud couldn't make it because of her Felix allergy, but the conversations flowed smoothly regardless. Until mom and dad went a bit off the mark and began to ask weird questions. I love the diamonds on your neck. They remind me of a certain diamond-crusted Santa. Where did you get them? Have you ever taken something that doesn't belong to you? Like a Santa statue, for instance. I realized what they were up to. As Diana's dad dipped his hand into his pocket to pull out his phone, Mum and Dad suddenly leaped across the table to confront him. I knew it! You're a thief! Stealing a cutlery, are you? What? I'm just trying to get out of my phone. So, this is why you invited us over? For you and your parents to embarrass us? Come on, we're leaving this silly house! Diana and her parents left the house angrily, and I faced Mum and Dad, disappointment written all over my face. Honey, we didn't mean to go that far. We just wanted to make sure- Save it. I'm sick and tired of you guys always ruining everything. I didn't want to hear any more of their excuses. I needed some space. So I walked out of the house and just strolled down the street. Lost in my thoughts, but as I walked, I noticed empty shops and people huddled together, whispering. What was wrong this time? I approached a friendly-looking shopkeeper and inquired. Hey, please, do you have any idea what's going on? Do you live under a rock? Someone's been stealing from our town for weeks. First Santa, now our goods and personal belongings. Something has to be done, or Christmas will be bad for us all. This was more serious than I thought. A serial thief was on the loose in my town. I also noticed that in the spot where Santa had been earlier, some flowers were growing there. They weren't just any flowers, they were ghost orchids, just like the ones Diana's mom had given me. But that'd mean, no, I couldn't bear to think of it. I turned back and strolled home so confused about everything. As I passed by Maud's room that night, I noticed she looked in a worse state than before and felt really bad for her. Hey, Maud, do you need help? Go away! That scent! It's everywhere! 
When I turned around to leave, that was when I noticed the ghost orchid seeds on her table, and the Santa statue hiding in the open drawer. Maud, what's this? I asked as I picked the statue up. I uh, can uh, explain. And these. Felix, uh, I was speechless as a lot of thoughts invaded my head. Maud's sneezes uh, got worse, limiting her uh, speech and I had to leave the room back to mine. I sat at my table frustrated. Something wasn't right. A lot of things weren't adding up. I could feel it in my bones. Since we were kids, Maud had never had reason to steal. So why now? I got up from my desk to find mom and dad and found them in the sitting room. Mom, dad, we have to talk. If it's about the dinner. No, it isn't. It's about the thief. I found the Santa and Diana's <gasps> orchid seeds in Maud's room. Our baby girl isn't a thief. Exactly. I've thought about this whole thing, and my guts tell me there's someone out there trying to frame Maud or Diana's family. The person thinks they're smart, but we're detectives, and we're smarter. My parents had looks of surprise on their faces, but I couldn't blame them. I thought you didn't like being a detective. Well, I just wanted you and Mom to give me some breathing space. Oh, sweetie, you should have just said so. And for real, we're really sorry about the dinner this time. Mom and Dad apologized over and over, and after a while, they got out some UV lights for the investigation. We started with Maud's room, tracing handprints and footprints in the dark. A shoe print that belongs to none of us. That's our first clue. We'll follow the shoe prints. I'll be out of your hair soon, Maud. I want to tag along. You don't have to. No matter what I said, Maud insisted. And we had no choice but to agree because Maud always did what she wanted anyways. When we left the house, Maud's sneezing subsided. We began to follow the pattern of the footprints all the way to... Diana's, Diana's house? house? We found Diana and her family packing up their things out of the house into a big van. Diana, why are you guys moving out this late at night? She avoided my eyes guiltily, and Maud's <sighs> sneezing came back tenfold. Ugh, that scent! It's so strong on you! It's choking me! I have to leave! That was when it dawned on me. Maud wasn't allergic to me. She was allergic to Diana. The only reason she thought she was allergic to me was because Diana was often around me, so I carried some of her scent. Diana, why is Maud allergic to you? Did you mess with my antidote? <sighs> yes, I mixed your antidote with my scent. It wasn't meant for Maud. It was meant for you. I wanted you to stay away from me. I'm a bad person. How? Suddenly, Mom exclaimed. Oh my god, you guys are the thieves! I found her looking at the back of the van Diana's family were loading their things into. Inside were a lot of stolen items from the town residents. I couldn't believe my eyes. All this while, you've been the thieves, and you've been tricking me. I'm so sorry, Felix, but I wasn't tricking you. My daughter has a condition called kleptomania. She can't help stealing, and that's the real reason we've never stayed long in any town. I was the one who planted the evidence in Maud's room. Your parents were onto me. We were going to return everything stolen tonight before driving to another town. I stared at Diana, and she really looked sad. I felt bad for her. I moved closer and grasped her hand in mine. I had no idea you had a mental condition, Diana. You could have told me. I was ashamed. Your parents didn't like me so much. What if you stopped liking me too? That'll never happen. There's a reason I always stood up for you to my family. It's because I believed you were different and special. Oh, Felix. I'm so lucky to have a friend like you. Diana hugged me before turning towards her parents. Dad, Mom, I'm sorry for being a difficult kid. You've always been by my side, and you're the best parents ever. Come here, honey. Diana hugged her parents, and the moment felt so passionate it almost made me tear up. Dad and Mom stepped up to Diana's family, looking remorseful. We're also sorry for making your stay in Cottingwood uncomfortable. Please don't travel. Your daughter can get help here. We know a good mental health facility. Diana's parents accepted Dad's offer, and the following day, we helped them in returning all of the stolen items. We put Santa back in his spot, and in a week, I finished my antidote. After drinking it, Maude and I got better. Hmm, it worked! I guess we will have a scientist in the family for a change. I'm proud of you, brother. Thank you, Maude. It really means a lot. I was finally accepted for being different in my family, and I think this was the best Christmas ever. We wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. After the festive season, Diana left for the mental health facility, and I kept in touch with her. And then, one day when I visited her, she had a surprise to show me. They asked us to paint the most special person or thing in our lives. Great! And what did you draw? Wow, Diana, this is beautiful. Wait, does that mean I'm your special person? Diana nodded shyly, and then kissed me on the cheek. I turned red, and then took her hand and drew her closer to me. You're special to me too, Diana.
Hi, I'm Mulan, and I grew up in an orphanage, which wasn't so bad since many people loved me because of my incredible skating skills. When I was just seven years old, I could even spin in the air with my skate shoes. Wow, she's, she's like, like a bird. bird! I loved the attention I got from everyone. Though there were a few kids who were jealous of me, I simply ignored them until one Christmas day, this boy with a big head tried to ruin my skating shoes. Ooh, what do we have here? Is it your ugly shoes, Mulan Balan? Give it back now, Hammerhead! <laughs> if you want it, you gotta catch it. He threw one of them high up in the air, and I sprung onto the dining table and caught it with my mouth before I charged after the silly boy who couldn't even fight back after that. Leave me alone! Ah! Don't ever touch my shoe again. Mulan, get down from that table right now! You've ruined Christmas! Sorry. That was the last Christmas we were ever served chicken, and everyone hated me because of it, especially our guardian. She spread lies about me being too wild, so no one wanted to adopt me. She's pretty, but a bit too strong for a girl. It hurt, and I thought I was doomed to never be a part of a family. But when I turned 16, something out of this world happened. I was running an errand for the orphanage when I saw a woman standing by the bridge. She looked like she wanted to jump, but some idiots were busy videoing her. No! Don't do it! I flew like Wonder Woman and got her away from there. Cut, cut. Kid, who are you? You just ruined our show. Show? Are you crazy? This woman was about to jump, and you're busy taking videos with your stupid phones? Suddenly, the woman I saved and everyone else began to laugh at me. <laughs> we are shooting a movie deal. I'm an actress, but thanks for saving me, my hero. Oh. I ran away from there before I could embarrass myself further, wishing no one in the movie crew and I would ever cross ways again. But the next day, I was called into the nun's office, and I was shocked to see the actress and the producer smiling at me. Hey, I didn't introduce myself yesterday. My name is Percy, and this is my husband, Will. We would like you to be a part of our family. Are you sure you don't want to choose anyone else? Mulan is a bit... ungirly. You may just bring her back in a week. Her straightforward personality is just what we like. What do you say, Mulan? The Guardian's words made me super angry, and determined to prove her wrong, I said yes. That same day, I packed up and followed the couple home. I was a bit nervous, but Percy's sweetness was reassuring. We already have a son, and I'm sure you two would get along. His name is Gordon. Their house was a big multi-duplex. And just as we went into the sitting room, a bowl of mashed potatoes suddenly came flying at us. A guy my age was yelling at a shivering maid. I couldn't believe he had just thrown food like it was nothing. Ugh, it's too lumpy. Why can't you do anything right? Gordon, honey, please calm down. Come and meet your new sis. Gordon stomped over to me, and I nearly melted from how he glared at me. And don't call her my sis. She will never be Lara. You got that half right, bro. I am a champion. What are you? A loser who throws tantrums over food? His <gasps> jaw dropped in shock, and he pointed at me. Return it. I don't want it. I'm a person, not an it, dumb skull. <laughs> She's part of our family now, Gordon. There's no going back. Gordon walked out angrily, and after dinner, my parents showed me to a beautiful bedroom. I tried to act all cool, but inside I was all jittery. I had a beautiful large space all to myself. Bye-bye, cramped dorms. Don't worry about Gordon. He'll come around. I hoped he did, because I was already feeling super comfortable. Thanks. I can deal with babies like him. I fell asleep just as my head touched the very soft mattress. But hours later, I felt something crawling up my side. When I turned, I came face to face with a monster wearing a red jacket. Ah! I grabbed my pillow and smacked blindly at it, but only ended up smashing the vanity mirror and lampstand. It ran and jumped out of the window just as my new parents came in. Mulan, what's wrong? Haunted. Your house is haunted. No way. Did you see something? All I could do was point at the window. There's nothing there. No one. Must be your imagination. You know, the change in environment and stuff. They were looking at me like I was a little crazy, so I decided to play it down. Sure, you... you must be right. I didn't sleep for the rest of the night and kept my lights on. Thankfully, Percy stayed with me. The next morning, Percy and Will left super early for work, so I went to the kitchen and insisted on helping the maid prepare breakfast. Okay, you can blend these tomatoes. She put some tomatoes in a glass jar and switched a button. I yelped when the tomato turned liquid in seconds. Nick, what is that? It's a blender, doofus. Never seen one before. I glared at Gordon as he came in looking all smug. Of course I have. Liar. I know you were nothing but a backwater village girl. Don't call me that. Prove me wrong. What is this? 
The thing was a blocky machine with a really big pipe. I had no idea what it was. I know what it is, but I'm not telling, just because you asked. He smiled <laughs> evilly at me and did something with the machine that had it coming at me with its pipe wide and about to suck me in. Ah! He chased me around the house with it, despite the maid yelling for him to stop, ruining everything in his path. Later, when Percy and Will came back, the house still looked like a war zone, despite my efforts and the maids to put it back together. What happened here? It's Milan. I think she's a bit crazy. She just started screaming and ruining everything. He's lying. Ask her. He's the one who went crazy. I turned to the maid for her to speak as a witness, but she was staring at Gordon and shivering like a leaf. It's true. Mulan did it. With the way I had ruined my room last night, I couldn't totally blame them for believing the lie. Milan, one hour at the porch, now. I went out to the porch feeling horrible. Gordon had succeeded in making me appear like a nutcase anymore and I was sure the couple would kick me out. I couldn't let that happen. The Guardian would laugh at me. I am sorry, Milan. I know you didn't do it. Then why did you send me out? It was the only way to avoid Gordon throwing tantrums. Gordon is kind of a problem child. My husband and I thought that maybe he was just really lonely and needed a sibling. So that's why I'm here? As his pacifier? No, you see... Gordon had a twin sister with your personality. He became this way soon after we lost her. I felt chills run down my spine at the sad news. Oh, sorry about that. Our family has never been the same again. And we just, we just wanted to be a family of four again this Christmas. And the rest. I won't baby him like you guys, but I'll try to understand him. That was my promise. But it was so hard to keep because Gordon, now aware of my technophobia, kept pulling pranks at me. Soon, I was registered in the same school as him, and I was stunned to see how different Gordon was there. He was the complete opposite, quiet and so reserved. It didn't take long for me to discover why. I was working out some class assignments when a group of overgrown boys entered our class and walked right up to him. Hey, Gordon, what's in the bag? They grabbed his bag and began rummaging through it like raccoons. Oh, yes. Mommy's boy got the cash as usual. Wait, that's my lunch. Don't take it. Are you sure, Gordon? You know what will happen if I don't, right? I will show everyone the video of- Okay, okay. Take it. It's all yours. They laughed and walked away. And though I was really mad at them, I didn't want to jump in until I understood what they had over him. So the moment we were on our ride home, I asked, Those kids from before, what's their deal? Mind your business. Look, I don't know what has you so angry, but if being nasty to everyone is your way of feeling better after those kids are nasty to you, then you're the lowest. He didn't talk to me again, and I ignored him right back, leaving the car as soon as we arrived home. Later, just to pass the time, I went exploring the house, and I was shocked to find a fancy pair of used skating shoes. That's my sister's. She used to skate. I do too. Oh, so that's why my parents adopted you. You remind them of- Oh, whoa. Don't pull any reincarnation stuff on me now. He looked so sad, and I had to comfort him. I am not a replacement for your sister, but I can be an awesome sis to you if you drop the attitude. You were right. I am always angry, not only because I miss my sis, but <laughs> those kids make my life horrible. I was dared to bark like a dog at one of their birthday parties. I didn't know they videoed it. If they show it to the whole school, I'll be the biggest laughing stock of the century. Those jerks! I have an idea. But first, you owe me an apology for sneaking into my room that night. The masked figure was you, wasn't it? Yeah. I am sorry. Wanted to freak you out in a way. The following school week, I had dog costumes ready for my plan. Um, are you sure about this? Trust me, do something worse than what they have done in the video, and the video won't hold water. As if timed, the group came to us. Hey, Gordon, lunch money. You know what will happen if you don't cooperate. Post a video of me barking like a dog. Oh, growing wings now. Just watch as we show the whole school the video next week as a Christmas gift. As soon as they turned their backs, Gordon and I donned the dog costumes and chased after them on all fours, barking like dogs. Ah, freaks! They ran screaming like babies, and many students got a good video. The big guy had tears in his eyes when we pinned him down. Now you're the one on camera! How's that for a Merry Christmas in advance? The stunt earned us a detention, but it didn't matter because Gordon was so happy. He hugged me right as we got home. Thanks, sis. It's what siblings do for each other. Gordon and I nearly had a heart attack when our parents arrived looking like mad people. Pack your essentials and let's leave. Now! What? Why? Just obey Milan. We will explain later. There's no time. We packed up, and they drove us to a decaying cabin. There was no light, and we had to get firewood to heat ourselves up. 
Okay, can anyone explain what we are doing here now? My question exactly. We didn't have enough money to adopt you, so we had to borrow from a loan shark. Now he's asking for the money in a week or he's going to make trouble. Or worse, take you. Uh, take me? Huh, I am not some doll. How much are we talking about? Fifteen grand. There's no way we would get that in a week. We can't let Milan go, so we have to hide for now until we get the money. I am so sorry, Milan. Your first Christmas with us is going to be terrible. I was touched that they would rather stay in this dying cabin than let me go, but I had no idea how to help. Even Gordon was so desperate to help, he began to act a bit crazy. We were having dinner one night when he came in wearing the red cape, the one he scared me with on my first night at the house, and carrying a shovel. Where are you going? If I shovel a thousand driveways, I can get 15 grand and we can go back home. Shovel a thousand driveways? Are you crazy? Young man, drop the cape and come eat. Never! This house is on the brink of collapse. Suddenly, the roof of our cabin tore off and the wind rushed in, taking the cape Gordon had refused to remove and bringing in a flyer. Oh no. See? While everyone was panicking about the roof, I grabbed a flyer and almost screamed with joy. Fifteen grand for winning a skating competition on the 25th? Before we could read more, the wind took it back, but I knew how to help. And it wasn't at all crazy like shoveling a thousand driveways. I trained for the day like a horse, but when Percy arrived with the costume she designed, I wanted to run. Why does it have bulbs and wires inside? It's going to display Christmas lights and make a performance stand out. Sounds nice, but the idea of the gown was a big challenge to my technophobia. Look, it's okay. If it makes you uncomfortable, I will just go ahead with my own plan. Gordon's words gave me a morale boost. He was willing to shovel a thousand driveways for me. This was my family now too, and making sacrifices came with the package. It's okay, I'll wear it. The D-Day came, and I dressed up in the clothes that felt like bombs to me, just as I was announced to come and perform. Gordon handed me his sister's skating shoes. I want you to have it because you're my sister now. I couldn't speak with how happy I was to finally be accepted by Gordon. I changed into the shoes and felt a renewed confidence. I got onto the rink and began to skate. When our clothes lit up with different colors and lights, people stood up and gave us a standing ovation. You did it! You did it! We did it. I came in second place for a 12 grand dollar prize. And to top it all, one of the judges asked to be my coach for the next Winter Olympics. <laughs> Mom and Dad were so happy. I'm so proud of you. At least with what I have, it's more than enough to pay our lender. Now let's go home and have a proper Christmas party. But instead of getting home, we got stuck in traffic. Hey, what's going on? There's a mountain of snow ahead. We need to wait for it to be cleared up. Uh, this Christmas is ruined. Hey, it's not compulsory we sit around a table eating chicken for Christmas. We hardly did that at the orphanage. Really? What did you do then? We sing. Uh, no way. On the first day of Christmas, my true love said to me, One pair of slippers, two pairs of boxers, and a very hot bowl of beef stew. Um, okay, <laughs> let's not sing. <laughs> you are something else, Milan. You came and lit up our family like a Christmas tree. Thank you. It wasn't the typical family Christmas, but I was so happy and grateful for what I now had. I was loved. I had a family. What makes Christmas perfect isn't the lights and the bulbs and the gifts. It's just being with the ones who love you and who you love.